couple wheelie. Hey guys, Russell from Aussie Mushroom Supplies here again. Today it is heat pasteurization. This is the most popular method and you can do it with anything, a hot plate, stove, I've got a boiler thing here which can set temperature. So we're gonna go with the fancy method today. We've got a boiler where you can just set the temperature, walk away and leave it and come back in the afternoon and it should be ready to go. Pretty simple to do with any other method. You just have to watch the temperature and make sure you don't get too hot. Let's get into it. We're soaking the substrate in the warm water to kill off any sort of fungus spores and things like that. I'm just filling up to about halfway because when we obviously put substrate in there, it's gonna fill up some more so we don't overfill it. You don't need something like this to do it. You can do it with a stove and a pot. You just gotta have a, obviously a temperature probe to keep an eye on your temperature. <sighs> now the water's a temperature, let's chuck in all of our material. Obviously, because it's hot, just anything, just to push it and submerge it underwater. You can use anything to keep it submerged, a plate, whatever you can find, a brick. Regardless of the substrate you're using, you want to keep the heat in your substrate between 72 and 82 degrees for a minimum of two hours. You don't want to let it get hotter than 85 degrees as you'll kill off beneficial bacteria. And if it's too cool, it won't kill competitive fungi spores that may outrun your fungus. Just making sure it's underwater and holds that temperature for at least two hours. So after this is cooked, we'll then put it out into a strainer, let all the excess moisture evaporate. The main focus of now is give it a good hot soaking to kill off anything we don't want on there. I've got a nice bigger pot, I'm gonna just leave on top to sort of keep the stuff submerged. I'm gonna cover it with two seconds. Pretend I had it prepared earlier. So I've got a nice big cover. We've got something holding the straw under the water. And then I've got this to cover the top to keep the heat in. So then it's gonna be more efficient when you don't lose all that heat out of the top. We're gonna let that sit for two hours and uh, yeah. And we're back. Our sugar cane is nice and hot. So what we're gonna do is drain all the water out, take the lid off and let it strain a bit. And once it's cool enough to touch, we're gonna unload all the sugar cane mulch onto a drying rack, let it dry out so all the excess water wicks away from the heat and then we'll bag it up. Ooh, is it organic? I'd just like to point out, it is organic. I should probably wait till that's. All the water's drained out, so we're gonna spread out all the sugar cane mulch on the bench to let it air out. But the first thing we're gonna do, clean the bench and sterilize it, so our semi-pasteurized material doesn't get contaminated by whatever was left on the bench from last time, so. Isoprol, good drain down. Spray, Hot, 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 hot. Cool, we got it all. All right, so now we've got it all out the bench. What we're gonna do is try and spread it out evenly just so all the excess moisture wicks away and so it cools down quicker so we can add our spore. Don't forget, always make sure your hands are clean, gloves, you don't wanna contaminate your nice clean work with your dirty fingernails. All right, we're gonna let that sit there for a bit cool down, all the excess moisture is going to steam away while it cools, and then we're going to come and add our spawn and bag it up. And we're back! And we're cool. Cooler than a fall in a swimming pool. <laughs> Time to add our fungus. As always, don't forget to clean the bag. Oh God, it won't even open. 
add your spawn to it on the bench. If there's any clumps, obviously with sterile hands, break them up, mix it all together. And you gotta remember, the more spawn you use, the quicker it's gonna all colonize, the best chance you have of it being successful. So less spawn, bad. More spawn, awesome. You want a nice even mix, so then the fungus doesn't have as far to grow to then fully colonize everything. And you want to grow faster than anything else that may have landed on it. If you don't have this kind of bench or anything, you can just do it in the bag, do a handful of your sugarcane mulch, handful of spawn, mix it up, and just layer it like a lasagna in your bag. That'll work just the same as well. Any spawn that's left over, if you roll it up, sticky tape, zip tie, whatever, bag seal even better, you put it back in the fridge and use it later. So we're gonna use our straw log bags we have, and then also whatever's left, we'll put in other containers, just to show you what sort of containers you can use. It doesn't matter what kind of vessel it goes in, as long as it's got air exchange, it'll work. Also, don't forget to keep an eye out for more updates, as we'll show you how different all these different methods yield. Make sure it's nice and compact, a zip tie to close it. Just for something different, just gonna use a standard Ziploc bag. Don't forget to check out Aussie Mushroom Supplies for all the other bits and pieces you need. We've got filter bags, filters, all the little tools you need to make everything work well. Just for fun, we do a little lunch bag. Just for something different, we're gonna do a container. We'll see if we can watch the fruit inside of there. We've got this air zip tool, we call it, just to add air holes, little tiny ones, so your mushrooms can breathe. Make sure you give it a spray with isoprol before you use it in case there's old dirty stuff on there. We'll do one side and then the other. That'll also give you little holes for any excess water to drain out. Same with this big one. You can also get this air zip maker from our website and also these straw log bags. They've got pre-made holes, so they're pretty easy. You just stuff them full of substrate and away you go. Heat pasteurizing. It's one of the best low-tech methods you can do for the best success. Number one, you have to hold your temperature between 72 to 82 degrees for at least two hours. This will kill all your low temp spores and fungi that will try and outcompete your mushroom. Number two, make sure you don't go over 85 degrees because this will start to hurt beneficial bacteria that will help keep your problems at bay while your mushroom fungus takes over. Number three, you can reuse your water to do a second cook straight away, but after two cooks, dispose of your water as it becomes very poisonous to other plants. So don't tip it in your garden. Number four, spawn. You don't need as much spawn as with the cold soaking method. You need between 2.5 to 7.5% wet weight ratio. Start around 7% and work your way back down to 2% as you get better. Number five, don't forget you can use reusable tubs and buckets. Just make sure they're nice and clean before you use them. Good soapy wash first. Number six, you can also use a 50-50 mix of hardwood sawdust to your straw or sugarcane mulch. This way you can grow other wood-loving mushrooms like lion's mane. Number seven, you can also put your material in pillowcases. This makes it a lot easier to load and unload and you can leave them in the pillowcases to strain and this will keep them covered while they're straining. Woo, and that's another video, done and dusted. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If there's anything else you want to learn, drop us a comment down below. Don't forget to smash that bell, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you later. And don't forget to smash that bell over there. Or is it over there? Is it there? There? Where's that bell? <laughs>